Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Unnamed Kids Show. I'm George. And I'm Andrew. And today we're gonna dive into a special part of the calendar here at church. We're gonna be talking about- My Lent. birthday. Your, your birthday, when, when's your birthday? My birthday is in December. Mm, nope, that's, that's for a while. Uh, we're talking about Lent. Oh, it does make a lot more sense. That's happening now, right? We'll talk about your, your birthday in like six months. Okay, cool. Uh, Lent happens uh, starting in, on Ash Wednesday mm -hmm. and it goes all the way through Easter. Yep, and Lent, right, is this time of the year that we uh, celebrate Jesus coming back to life. Uh, and on Easter, uh, the day itself is a pretty fun day. Yeah, well, how did, how did you celebrate uh, when you are younger? Yeah, uh, my family would make really yummy food, mm -hmm. and I look for this big, giant, golden egg that is filled with candy and treats and good things. I used to do that. That sounds magical. Yeah, it really I, was. I do that right now. Yeah, it's awesome. Lent is also this time where we can practice some things as well. But before we get into that, let's listen to our Bible verse for this episode. It comes from Proverbs 4.20. Let's take a listen. My child, pay attention to my words. Listen closely to what I say. Don't forget my words. Keep them deep within your heart. Listen and keep God's word in your heart. That's a great thing to be thinking about as we go through this Lenten time. Absolutely, George. And there's a few ways we can do that. Uh, for some people, they want to give something up. Uh, maybe you want to give up sweets or junk food or, or maybe cut out screen time. Whoa. Yeah, that's a big one. Maybe cut back on screen time. That seems good. Make it a big sacrifice. Yeah. Right. Or maybe you practice something. Maybe it's uh, trying to do something kind for someone in your life or you want to read a little bit more, or you're trying to learn something new, like a new song or a new instrument. Yeah, and for some folks, maybe it's reflecting more, writing in a journal, maybe you're praying more for, for something or someone. Yeah, and those are awesome things to be thinking about during this Lenten time. How about right now, with our cast and crew of friends, puppets, humans alike, let's get into this episode of The Unnamed Kids Show. Let's do it. Well, Andrew, 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 Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Georgie. Hey, guess what, look what I found. Oh, you found my U-Divers bobblehead. Woohoo! Yes, remember how I lost it, but you were really forgiving and realized that we can still be upset and can be okay at the same time? Yeah, totally. Here it is, that's awesome. Thanks for bringing it back. Uh, wh where'd you find it? Guess. Did you find it under your bed? No. Um, did you go back to Sky Zone and find it there? No. Uh, was it inside your drum set? Inside my drum? What? No, Andrew, it was in my backpack. It was in my backpack the whole time. There's a secret compartment in there. The place you least expected. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad it's back. Yeah, well, thank you, Andrew. I thought maybe, well, you know, I could share about all of this with our friends at church on a Sunday, maybe. Well, I've heard that it's Lent right now, yep. and you lent me your bobblehead, uh, so it's perfect. Well, Georgie, not quite. The Lent we're talking about actually has a different definition. Oh, well, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, you did tell me what Lent was a little while ago. Do you mind refreshing my brain? Absolutely. Lent is a time where we at church uh, spend some intentional time reflecting um, and preparing for Easter and the last parts of Jesus' life. Oh, well, what are some of the things that people do, Andrew? Yeah, sure. A lot of what people do kind of reflects what Jesus did. Uh, Jesus was preparing. He knew that the last parts of his life were going to be really tough, so he actually spent 40 days in the wilderness. Yeah, it's a long time. And in that time, he prayed, he fasted, uh, which means he, he, he didn't eat. Uh, yeah, and he, he spent a lot of time uh, reflecting. Whoa, what? 40 days? That's a long time. My stomach is gurgling just thinking about it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's important that it's a long time because it just helps us grow. Uh, in our journey of faith. We just pick that one thing, we do it for at least 40 days, uh, we become better versions of ourselves. Well, Lent is already happening and I haven't really thought about any of those things to do. Oh no. Oh no, Andrew, is that okay? There, that's absolutely okay. There, there's a lot of ideas, there's a lot of suggestions I could give you, but hey, why don't you try this? There's a lot of great people here at Meeting House. Why don't you go around and ask some people uh, what they're going to do to prep for Lent? Oh, yeah. That sounds like a great idea. Okay, I'll talk to you later, Andrew. Thanks. Bye. See you, Georgie. 
Still works. Whoa. Hey, Carol. Well, Georgie, where'd you come from? Well, I've been going around church talking with different people about Lent. Did you know it's Lent? Yes, I do. Yeah, and I'm trying to figure out what I can do for Lent. Uh, and it's been great to hear people talk about things that they're practicing or doing. Um, but, Carol, wait. Carol, what are, what are you doing out here by this tree? Well, it is getting to be spring, and this tree is going to start dripping. Do you know what's going to drip out of it? Whoa, I have no idea. <laughs> well, it's very exciting. It's just like creation. It's a new beginning, and we're going to get sap out of this tree. Sap? Sap for, for sap. what? Sap! Sap! You know, to make maple syrup for our pancakes. What? I love maple syrup, <laughs> especially in maple bacon. Oh, I love bacon, Carol. <laughs> I do too, I do too. But wait, how how does that work to get well, sap from the tree? You know, I just noticed on this side of the tree, there's already a hole here and there, it's dripping down the tree. Oh. And you know what? The squirrels love to come in and get that sap because <gasps> they're running out of food and they need some nourishment. So they probably will be on this tree, but I'm gonna show you how we're gonna drill a hole right here. And this is called a spile. A spile. It looks cool. like a straw. Yeah, it does. And then it's got a little trough in it and a hook, and we're gonna hang a blue bag on it. So you wanna watch? I'd love to. Yeah, let's see it. All right, we're gonna pick this spot here about two feet up, and this is a really old drill. It's called a brace and a bit. You could use an electric drill, but I kind of like to do things the old fashioned way. That's cool. So we're gonna put that in there and we're gonna just start cranking, cranking. Wow. And if it's gonna be flowing that white wood that's coming out, I need to push and keep drilling. Look at all that white stuff that's coming out. That's wow. called sap wood. Wow. And if it's gonna be flowing, it's gonna be wet. Let's check it out. Let's find a little twig and I, here, I'll hold that. Thank you. Oh, Georgie, it's wet. Wow. Look at So that's a good thing, it's right? It's gonna drip. Wow. There it goes. We can get maple syrup now. I can put my finger in it. Does so it taste good? Mm -hmm. You yeah. want it to taste? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, yum. <laughs> Actually, it, it kind of just tastes right. like water, but it's good. Okay. Now we're gonna set that in there like that with a little hook. And just kind of tap it in a little bit. And then we have what we call sap bags. Sap bags. And that's going to collect our sap. So it all just goes in that bag and then Isn't becomes that amazing? maple syrup? No, it's not quite that easy. We oh. need to work a little bit at it. Huh. So after maybe Lawrence and Peter collect the sap, we're going to put it in a big pan over a propane, like some heat, uh -huh. and we're going to boil it. And oh. we boil it, and we boil it, and boil it, until it becomes syrup. Look at this. It's drip, drip, drip. So many drips. This is the first day. I'm so excited. Woohoo! I've had to be so patient. You know, there's a lot of things we need to do during Lent. Yeah. It's, you know, we need to be patient. We're kind of anticipating everything that's coming in spring and creation and all the beautiful things that God has given us. So yeah. it's pretty exciting for me because I've been waiting for since February. Yeah, so wait. let's get this bag on here. So Carol, you said we have to be patient, right? And wait during Lent. Yeah. I, I'm curious, does that mean I have to go inside the tree and turn into sap <laughs> and then come out in, in a blue bag? No. And that's, what I, that's what you do during Lent? You I, can practice other things that are good for you. Like you can be patient, like waiting for a letter from your favorite friend. You can um, just look for love in all sorts of places and share. There's a lot of good qualities that you can practice and think about during Lent. That's, just to make you a better person. That's really great. Thank you, Carol, for sharing that with us. Well, I will hope you have a great Lenten journey and I'll be seeing you around. That sounds great, Carol. Thanks All for right. sharing with us. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Rowan Mellon, and for Lent, I'm giving up talkies, and I'm trying to pray Hail Mary and Our Father every day, every night when I'm going to bed.
All right, friends, we've been sitting for a little while, so let's stand on up and we're gonna sing a little song together. It's called Mr. Rabbit, so I need you to give me your best rabbit impression right now. Do you have a wiggly nose? Do you have floppy ears? Are you hopping up and down? You're gonna need to be doing those things during this song, led by some of our friends in God's garden. Mr. Rabbit, Mr. Rabbit, your coat is mighty great. Yes, bless God, I made that way. Every little soul must shine. Every little soul must shine. Mr. Rabbit, Mr. Rabbit. Are so floppy. Yes, thank God I hear goodness ring. Every little soul must shine. Every little soul must shine. Mr. Rabbit, Mr. Rabbit, you hop around the room. Yes, thank God I'm loved by you. Every little soul must shine. Every little soul must shine. Mr. Rabbit, Mr. Rabbit, your nose is wiggling. Yes, thank God for the smells of spring. I'm in your office. Thanks for letting me pop in here. You've never been in my office before. I, you know what? I never have. And you've never been on the Unnamed Kids Show yet. See, Jeff, I'm going around trying to ask different members of our community what Lent means to them. I'm trying to figure out maybe what I can do during this Lenten season. That's a great idea. You know, how much fun are you having asking some of your old friends, but also people you didn't know? A lot of fun. And I'm learning some great things. And I'm curious, you know, with your role here at church as, as the head pastor, yeah. um, what are some of the things that you do during Lent? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I'm a big Christmas and Easter guy. So Advent and Lent, they come every year, and every year I get a chance to kind of be part of the story again. The amazing truth of God loving us so much that Jesus came into the world, and then the hope that we have in Jesus and His love for us, showing us through Easter and the empty tomb. Yeah. So I'm kind of one of those traditional guys. So I kind of follow the traditional pattern of Lent, and that is I try to pray, and I, and I try to think of some new ways to pray to get outside of my normal kind of patterns of prayer. Okay. And, and that also includes kind of listening sometimes too, not just all these talking, but sometimes listening for what God might want to say to me too. Yeah, sometimes I'm not the best listener. Me either. 
Uh, and I also fast. Do you know what fasting is? Um, yeah, actually, we were just talking about it. It's, it's where you don't eat for a little while, right? My tummy kind of got a little grumbly thinking about that. Yeah. Oftentimes when we think about fasting, we think about going without food. During Easter, we can go without a number of different things okay. to create space for us to maybe give to God. And sometimes it's giving up something like food. I, and one time I gave up Diet Mountain Dew, which is Whoa. hard to do. It's the same color as me. I know. Uh, so I gave up sunflower seeds one time when I used to eat sunflower seeds all the time. But this Lent, I'm giving up something else to create room for God to work in my life or for me to focus on my relationship with God, I'm giving up being critical. Because you know what? In the world we live in right now, it's so easy for me to just be critical all the time, being frustrated and being mad and critical all the time. Yeah, critical meaning you're not gonna hang out with critters as much? Or no, no, like... that's a great question. Okay. No, I love critters. I love all kinds of critters. Okay. It means talking bad about something or mm -hmm. not being happy about everything all the time. If somebody wants to do something or say something, I'm just dis I'm just not happy with them. And, and, and sometimes it makes me sad, but it also makes them sad. Huh. So I'm just trying to look for the positive in circumstances and situations as, as opposed to the negative. Wow. And then it's this kind of this funny phrase called giving of alms. Giving of alms. You know I don't it, think I've ever heard that before. You know, it's a funny, we don't use it very often. Giving of alms is just making sure that I'm giving to others, giving away of something I have extra of to help others, oh. for the good of others. That's great. You know, it's like giving offering in some ways. You okay. know, we do that in church sometimes. Yep. yep. Maybe an extra special financial gift to an organization or, or to a person that needs help or maybe it's giving some extra time uh, to a circumstance or a situation or just giving more thought towards something as well. Yeah. So wow. those are the things that I do for Lent. And what that does is it helps me to remember how important my relationship with God is. That's wonderful. Thanks so much for sharing with me, Jeff. I hope you learn a whole bunch more new things. Definitely. I appreciate hey, your time. Come back anytime you want. Deal. Sounds great. There's so many things to explore in here. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <clears throat> Hi, um, are you Paul? Yeah, and you're Georgie, right? Yes, yep, Georgie the puppet. Um, say, Paul, I heard you were new to our church community. Um, and actually, I've never been in this room. What, what do you do here? Well, this is the chorale room. This is the music center wow. where the chorale sings. And I direct the chorale and I help around with the traditional music. Oh, wow, yeah. that's awesome. I'm so glad you're here. Absolutely, glad to be here. Yeah, so I'm wondering, does your singing at church change at all during Lent? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what Lent is and maybe what I can do during Lent. I love it. Well, yeah, singing, first of all, is something that we all can do, right? Because if we have a voice and we speak, then we can translate that into singing. And I like to sing a lot during Lent these things called mantras. And mantras are basically singing one phrase over and over and over, the same thing, and getting used to what that feels like, thinking about what we're singing. And actually, now that I think about it, we're singing a mantra right now in the traditional service. Can I teach it to you? Well, I, I would love that, but Paul, I don't really sing that well. I appreciate that, but the fact that you're even speaking to me means that you have a voice. You, you mean it? Absolutely. But how so? Well, let me give you an example. Outside of Jesus Remember Me, which I'll teach you in a second, mm -hmm. the fact that I'm speaking means that I can sing. For instance, I can sing, I can sing, I can sing, I can sing. Whoa. Right? Wow. So it turns out that as long as you have a voice that you use when you speak to other people, you can translate that into music. We are inherently musical creatures. Very cool. Even puppets? Absolutely. Oh, cool. <laughs> so let me teach you Jesus Remember Me, which is the, the mantra that we're using in our traditional worship. Okay. Let me find my pitch though. <clears throat> Let's go. Ba, ba, ba. Awesome. Wow. So I'll sing something and then I'll invite you to sing with me. Okay. okay. So the first phrase is Jesus. Let's do it together. Ready? Okay. Jesus. Awesome. The next part goes Remember me. Let's try that. Remember me. And then the next one goes, 
When you come into your kingdom. Let's try that. When you come into your kingdom. Simple, right? Yeah. So this is something that we can just repeat over and over and over and think about what that means. So let me sing it one time through and then I'll sing it with you. So okay. it goes, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now you. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Beautiful. You have a voice. Wow. I love it. And by singing that and repeating it over and over and over, we can think about what it means to say, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. When we're singing during Lent, we're thinking about that because Jesus died for our sins, but he also headed into home in heaven where he came from in the first place. The idea is what does that mean to us, right? And we can think about that as we sing. That's really great. I'm really happy to have met you, Paul. Absolutely. Great to meet you, Georgie. Come back and sing with the chorale once in a while. Oh, you mean it? Absolutely. I would love that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Paul. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Whoa, Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. There are so many great people here at Meeting House Church. Yeah, there really are. And, and you know what? So many that I bet I didn't even get to talk to. <gasps> maybe, maybe I want to use the rest of my Lenten time to meet more people and hear their stories. That's a great idea. I mean, getting to know the people in our community uh, is a great way to get closer to God. We're all made in God's image. Not that you need to do what everyone says during Lent. Right, yeah, that all those things would be a lot of things for one person or puppet to do, but I guess that's why we have a community of people here. Absolutely. During this time of Lent, whether it's through prayer or practices or just seeing what the people around us are doing, these are all great ways to help us be intentional on reflecting and knowing that Easter's coming up and we're all loved and special in God's eyes. True that. Thanks, Andrew. And thanks for the idea to go around and meet those people. It was a lot of fun. Anytime. And Andrew, I, I do and will get back to meeting more people and hearing their stories, yeah. but I think I also like to make some maple syrup too. Oh, yeah. And some maple bacon. Okay, that's good. And maple syrup with pancakes. Classic. And maple syrup sausages. And okay. maple syrup cheese puffs. What? And maple syrup toast. Uh -oh. And maple syrup uh, pancakes. And maple syrup French toast. And maple syrup uh, grilled cheese. Oh, and maple gross. syrup 